Hello everyone, hello world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to CodingScientist.com. You are watching Zero to Hero series, Hacking Raspberry Pi. All right, guys. So in the previous lesson, I showed you how to install Node.js, which is one of the critical components for running JavaScript applications and stuff like that. So I hope you guys are ready with that. So in this lesson, we will install TensorFlow. Wow, it's eye opening, isn't it? Well, exactly, because TensorFlow is so popular in the world for any kind of artificial intelligence and vision processing applications, especially image processing and stuff. That's the only name which pops up, right? However, installing TensorFlow on the Raspberry Pi is not as, e as easy as we might think, right? It, it gets a little tricky, complex, binding uh, ton loads of other algorithms and, you know, uh, playing around uh, with, with command lines and kind of thing. But what once you install successfully, you know, performing machine learning activities on Raspberry Pi on the edge becomes very, very easy. Anyway, so what we will do, I'm just going to quickly give you an introduction in this particular lesson. I will show you how you will actually install TensorFlow, which we will use at a later stage combining with Node.js and other Java components to execute artificial intelligence on your browser. So TensorFlow is basically an open source framework developed by Google for especially for machine learning and artificial intelligence, right? So you can use this for various tasks such as classifying an image or you might want to do some object detection with the bounding boxes around the object or an image or a live video or even estimating a pose of a people of, of a human right with what kind of posture he or she is standing and detect the bone the pose detection right. So the TensorFlow Lite is basically a lightweight version of TensorFlow designed for low powered computing devices like Raspberry Pi or ESP32 or, or Jetson Nano or even Arduino. You know, I have tried TensorFlow Lite and Arduino, Arduino. in one of my parallel uh, series, one of the series, I think uh, it was uh, Arduino 33 BLE Sense. I showed you how to install TensorFlow Lite and we tried to run a couple of machine learning algorithms on the Raspberry or on the Arduino uh, board itself. But here it's little similar but slightly different configuration and settings for Raspberry Pi because it's running on Linux operating system. So it's going to get really interesting guys. So let's move on. So I am going to show you my circuit to make sure that you understand I have connected remotely through VNC. None of my USB ports or HDMI ports are connected, neither the Ethernet because I am connected through Wi-Fi and GPU is uh, currently unaccessible, just the camera, I left it as it is and I am connected to my Wi-Fi, it's booted up, it's ready to log in. So let's move on. So let's go into my VNC, I am connected to my VNC, yes, there you go, it's connected, all right. Now, what we need to be doing first and foremost, as I explained to you before, right? Before you can even install TensorFlow, we need to complete some preparation work. Now, what is that preparation work? Unfortunately, TensorFlow Lite isn't available through the included repositories, right? Which, which, do, which generally doesn't come directly with your Python repo or any of the libraries. Instead, we must depend upon the Google's package repository and it's a huge task. So our first step is to perform an update of our Raspberry Pi's package list and then we upgrade any existing packages on our system, right? It's, it's very important. These are some of the key important aspects of Raspberry Pi. You need to understand this. So how do we do that? sudo apt get update. So let's open up the terminal right on the left side you can see this black color terminal window open it up this is going to open this dark color black window sudo space apt hyphen get update there you go it's updating it's going to get updated pretty quick for me because i just did it and I am on a high speed internet. So make sure that you, your internet uh, has got a pretty good uh, bandwidth. Now we need to upgrade sudo space 
apt i'm sorry sudo space apt iphone that is the minus get upgrade upgrade hit enter button on your keyboard and the upgrade operation runs and it's done in a ziffy that's because i just did it couple of minutes back before i made this video this lesson for you in your case it might take time depending upon two important reasons one the bandwidth of your internet that plays a major role number two how long it's been for you you know in the you have updated your uh, upgraded your your raspberry pi right if, if you if you haven't upgraded for about a week 10 days you know it might take about five minutes if you haven't upgraded for more than a month or several months it might take about 45 minutes to an hour you know it all depends upon the packages so let's move on let me clear this terminal let me clear it now what we need to do once we have upgraded our system once we up, once the update is complete we will need to add the google package repository containing tensorflow lite to our raspberry pi you know underlying arm architecture so that that's the way we need to pull it out uh, the entire uh, bundle of repositories so we can start this process by adding the repository to our source list right so you, you, I hope you understand what are the source lists by, you know, I, I'll talk about that later in case if you want to get into details, but this, it's going to be a huge lengthy terminal command guys. So, you know, I cannot explain line by line those terminal commands because I have done a lot of research and uh, try to do some troubleshooting and fixing and kind of thing and finally came out with this particular command, which I found from, uh, from, from the Google company, from the package library, uh, package manager itself. So I was able to find the correct terminal command, which I'm going to copy right now and put it right here in front of you. You can pick up this command from my video lesson. I'm going to share this with you. It's, it's a pretty lengthy one. Echo Deb uh, signing in, into, you know, the Coral Edge TPU archiving the key ring and pulling out the information from the google.com on the cloud from the package repository. That's what it means. But anyways, I'm going to hit enter and there is no error. Well, what does it mean? If there is no error, it's, it's kind of, there's nothing, right? Although we have added the repository, we still need to add its GPG key into our keychains directory. It's very important. Now, what is GPG key? Well, we will get into that at a later stage. The package manager will basically use this key to help ensure that the file did in fact come from this particular repository that's the key ring we need to add and again i found this key ring from the google package repository itself as i said guys it takes a lot of effort to do r d research and development and you know try to do, do quite a lot of debugging troubleshooting and you know try different sets of commands sometimes you 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 got to have a lot of patience right you need to have a lot of patience and the passion to make sure we reach the goal that's what i do generally right so anyway so the command line again it's going to be pretty lengthy so i am going to copy from my notes and paste it here i am going to leave this command part of this lesson you will get it you can copy and put it here on the terminal and we are going to run this helper package now boom there you go it's done in a ziffy because i have already done it so for in your case it's going to take at least 8 10 15 minutes again depending upon the speed of your internet your network you need to have a pretty good uh, bandwidth you know or or if it is a slow network it might take quite a longer time if it is a fast network it just happens in a ziffy anyways guys so this is how it is now let's move on to the next step so now since we modified our Raspberry Pi's package sources, we need to update our package list to scan the newly added repository. It's very important because we installed a huge package bundle package from Google, right? It, from the Google repository manager. And then it's now sitting on your ARM ARM architecture on top of your Raspberry Pi's operating system. Now, in order to make sure that the package works perfectly, we need to update the OS so that it observes the package. So you, you need to understand these things, right? So to perform an, an update of this package list, 
we need to use the command what command is that you are pretty much aware of that update command right sudo space apt hyphen get update this is the command and update and it's working let's see how much time it takes i think it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes because i have already done it so it should run pretty quick there you go it's done let me clear c l e a r let me clear the terminal all right now next what so now that we have prepared our raspberry pi we can install the tensorflow lite runtime to our raspberry pi it's going to get exciting guys in order to install we need to run another package so this will basically this particular command will basically install the latest tensorflow lite runtime from google's package repository so what is the command line it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward i'm going to put it up here this is the command so sudo space apt space install space python 3 remember we are running on python 3 not python 2 so python 3 dash tf light dash runtime let's cross our fingers and hit enter it's going to run because i have already installed there you go it's installed successfully so i haven't seen any error anywhere so it's pretty much straightforward so you will take about a couple of minutes to install this let me clear all right there you go it's clear now what is next now we need to now that we have already installed the package we can verify and ensure that the tensorflow light is now working by importing it how do we import there are a couple of ways either we can install we can run our thani ide and write some python script to import and see or the other option is we can run the import the python script on the terminal itself so there are two different methods right there are multiple more methods so you can start the python command line interface cli on your raspberry pi by typing just python 3 so let's see what happens say python 3 all right simple there you go and that's your i am on python 3.7.3 .3, which is the latest version and uh, you might get a different version if you if you are in python 2 i would suggest upgrade to python 3 it's very important because almost all my lessons are running on python 3 now we are on a python interpreter now what do we do from here right now all we need to do is we need to execute another line of command within the interface within this uh, within the terminal interface and all this line is doing is just importing the interpreter library right so what is that command so i am going to show you that's exactly we are going to do in our thani ide as well but we can run it on the command line i'm just going to paste it so basically we are importing from tf light package you know we are importing the runtime dot interpreter which is again we are importing the interpreter from the tf light so it has to ideally it shouldn't show anything up so let me hit enter boom now why am i excited because it's just showing arrow marks there's nothing no output so no news is actually good news it shouldn't show up it should not show up any kind of error so which means we have successfully installed tensorflow tensorflow light on your raspberry pi how do we verify we just verified with the interpreter itself if everything has worked so far like as you can see on the screen you should see no further messages within the command line itself right you can now run your tensorflow light models on your raspberry pi so guys in the upcoming lessons or probably you know the next few lessons i'm going to show you how to execute this tensorflow library uh, right and we will do some basic image processing and stuff like that it's going to get interesting make sure that your your uh, your camera is connected and uh, stuff so i'm going to show you some basic examples which comes inbuilt within the tensorflow light it's going to get really interesting and over a period of time in the next couple of lessons i will show you how to combine these algorithms on the web browser we will build some tools interesting tools with the buttons and stuff you know it's i have already built it so i'm going to show you how to import it from my github and configure on your raspberry and with a click of a button on the browser you can activate the camera do some image processing 
try to run the model the algorithms and and run, do some ai artificial intelligence and train the model and deploy again back within raspberry pi your robot is going to detect a human detect the hand gesture wow it's going to get exciting all right guys i will see you soon make sure that you have installed tensorflow light and keep everything ready updated and upgraded goodbye